is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am both counting as a new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2024 toyota camry courtesy of younger toyota in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so we are in this one today because this is the best selling mid-size sedan for 21 years now which is an insane statement to even say about any vehicle but the last year before the redesign for the 2025 model year as well so the question really is do you buy this one now maybe save a little bit of money or do you wait for the redesign next year and of course this one is known for incredible reliability and you now get the two years or 25,000 miles of complimentary maintenance with all new Toyotas as well so that's going to save you some money too but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a ton of different trim levels for the 2024 camry first one being the le starting at 26,420, se which actually is the one we are in today starting at 27,960, se nightshade for 28,960, xle for 31,170, xse for 31,720, xle v6 for 36,295, xse v6 for 36,845 and lastly the trd going for 33,400 and $85. And so if you were interested in all-wheel drive on top of that, all of those trim levels come standard with front-wheel drive, but for the four-cylinder engines, the non-V6 trim levels, you can actually add all-wheel drive. If you wanted to do that, simply add $1,400 then to any of those prices. But so then, as you can imagine, with all of these trim levels, there are two different power plants for the Camry. First one being the one that we have today, being a 2.5-liter naturally aspirated inline four-cylinder, belonging to the non-V6 trim levels, of course, putting out 203 horsepower at 6,600 RPM, 184 pound-feet of torque coming in at 5,000 RPM, power set to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know of course we will be testing out here in a little bit zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.8 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 28 in the city 39 on the highway for the front wheel drive 25 city then 34 on the highway for the all wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is the other power plant belonging of course to the v6 trim levels that one is powered by a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated v6 putting out 301 horsepower at 6600 rpm 267 pound feet of torque coming in at 4700 rpm power set to front wheels only through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters yet again zero to 60 time for that one though 5.8 seconds that's pretty impressive with mpg numbers coming in at 22 in the city 31 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel yet again and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the camry i did want to mention to you guys the drive modes there's some buttons located directly behind the shifter those drive modes will be eco normal and sport adjusting things like the shift points and the throttle response and so now having got all of that fun stuff out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration to the test here at the same time let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 camry here up to speed all right so before we do this acceleration test here there is a full manual shift mode i just slid the shifter all the way to the back and to the left there in three two one go from first gear hmm. okay it's not bad there's a slight delay i mean they're not the quickest paddle shifters but they're certainly not the slowest paddle shifters i've ever tested either so they actually weren't that bad. I don't mind them. Of course, the cool thing with paddle shifters is they're not only there for fun, but you can actually use them to do a little bit of engine braking if it were to be snowing out as well. So rather than hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the road, you can simply do a little bit of downshifting, let the engine do a little bit of a work, and you're less likely to actually slide off the road. So I like them for that reason as well. And like I said, they're not that bad. As far as acceleration goes, it was plenty quick, quite honestly. You're not going to have any issues in merging onto the highway with that. But anyways, I'm going to get back full control to the car here. I'm just going to slide the shifter back to the right. And to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 12-inch ventilated front tests for all trim levels, 
but the TRD trim level. That TRD trim level, of course, bumping that up to 12.9 inch ventilated front discs. In the back then, 11 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, comes in at a respectable 122 feet for all trims but the TRD. TRD puts it at 118 feet, which is sports sedan good. Anything in the one teens is a sports sedan. Anything in the 120s, pretty average. Anything in the 130s is a slow SUV or something like that. But 122 feet even though, that's plenty respectable. As far as the braking feel goes, let's just top them. It's fine, a little bit on the softer side of things, I gotta be honest, so I wouldn't have mind if, if uh, Toyota firmed up that braking feel a little bit, but having said that, that 122 foot number, that's perfectly fine, and honestly, the brakes feel perfectly fine for what this vehicle is. Then touching on suspension and handling, up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension, in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars, and of course, if you were to go with that TRD trim, that's gonna be the sporty trim, if you guys haven't figured that out yet. That's gonna add TRD tuned track spring, but also TRD tuned stabilizer bars as well. And if you were to go with the SE trims, like the one we have today, you're also going to get a front strut tower brace, which you guys probably already saw when I put the engine shots at the beginning of this video. So you got that as well. But anyways, as far as ride quality goes, it's honestly been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. So no issues there. And since I'm still in sports steering feel mode here, definitely weighted on the heavier side of things and actually let me see if the drive modes actually do adjust the steering sensitivity here yeah you can tell 100 percent the steering sensitivity is adjusted dependent upon the drive mode so if you like a heavier feel to the steering leave it in that sport driving mode if you want to loosen up that steering feel though put it in normal or eco so i i like that it's adjustable i will say that touching on cabin noise it's been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here tonight not a whole lot of wind noise or road noise coming into the cabin so no issues there whatsoever and by the way there is an acoustic laminated front windshield for every single trim level across the board which isn't always the case so that's certainly going to assist with that touching of visibility i honestly could see perfectly fine out the back of the camry so with the shape of this particular sedan you're definitely not going to have any issues with rear visibility do want to mention though with the xle v6 and xse v6 trim levels you will also get a head-up display projecting your speed speed limit and safety features up onto your windshield which better helps with forward visibility so it makes things a little bit easier to keep your eyes on the road and actually enjoy the drive here in the camry but anyways that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 toyota camry all right so here she is you guys the new 2024 toyota camry finished in midnight black metallic i think it looks dang good in black in my personal opinion but as always let's go ahead and start with where the camry is made take a look at the vin first character is the number four indicating that the camry is built and assembled here in the u.s specifically kentucky in case you were curious but starting up front the front fascia is going to differ amongst the trim levels of course the se trims is going to be the more sportier look it gives you more aggressive styling with some gloss black accents whereas the le trims is going to give you more polished styling i guess you could say more on the luxury s side of things with some more chrome accents in case you were curious about the differences there added front splitter can be found with a unique front fascia for the trd trim level of course to the sides led headlights with led daytime running lights do come standard for all trim levels across the board gotta love that it comes with the automatic feature as well and when it comes to the housings they are going to differ as well depending upon whether or not you go with the le or the se LE trims are going to give you clear headlight housings, whereas the SE trim levels are going to give you dark headlight housings. So that's what we have today, the dark headlight housings, because we have the SE. So did want to emphasize that as well. And then if you were to go with that TRD trim yet again to the bottom corners, you will find some front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little added aerodynamics there. But overall, I think it looks good. I'm curious what the redesign is gonna look like in 2025. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, but let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the Camry. All right, so but now since we are around to the side of this one, this is a look that I personally absolutely love on the Camry because of that C-pillar. The C-pillar looks like a sob in the back. And since we no longer have any sobs here in the US, I think it looks dang good, but there are two tone paint options available. I did want to mention that as well. Body colored side skirts for all trim levels, but the TRD, and that's going to give you kind of unique gloss black side skirts. 
case you were curious. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be gloss black though with the TRD trim. They will be heated then for the XLE, XSE trims and the TRD as well. Then if you wanted integrated turret signals, those three trims again, XLE, XSE and TRD trims. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. Of course, they're gonna differ dependent upon the trim yet again. 17 inch alloys for the LE. 18 inch machine finished alloys for the XLE trim levels, 19 inch gloss black alloys for the XSE trim levels, 19 by 8.5 inch matte black alloys for the TRD, and 19 inch matte bronze alloys for that SE Nightshade. That's actually a pretty cool look, the Nightshade wheels, but anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way around to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top. Rear spoiler is going to be available. We do actually have that with us here today. Gloss black rear spoiler for the TRD trim specifically. You will find some trim level badging found on the trunk of this one back there, along with some lettering telling you to like this video because because it helps me out tremendously. So go ahead and smash the like button real quick and let's continue on. LED tail lights do come standard on this one as well. TRD trim is gonna give you a gloss black rear diffuser. We don't really have that with us here today, but I think it still looks good. And then you will find a single exhaust outlet with dual chrome tips for all trim levels across the board. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. <laughs> Alright, so now since you are around to the back of the Camry, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob. There's actually also a button by the driver's side left knee then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 15.1 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down. Quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. There are a couple grocery bag hooks back there, which traditionally is not something you always find in sedans. It's typically an SUV feature, so I like seeing them back there. There's some cargo net attachments. There's some LED cargo lighting, so not always LEDs found in the cargo area, so also a big fan of that. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, we'll find a spare tire in case you were curious but then make our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 38 inches even for reference I mean even six feet tall this is how much space I had back there there is a rear center armrest with cup holders there's some front seat back mat pockets as well rear ventilation is going to come on the XLE and XSE trim level so our SE trim that we have today unfortunately does not have it there so I wouldn't emphasize that no rear charging ports either for whatever reason so anyways Toyota add some rear charging ports for all trim levels please but then make our way up to the front seats eight-way power driver seat does come standard cloth finish for the LE trim level but soft tex upholstery for the SE trims like we have today full leather seating them for the XLE and XSE trims heated front seats for the XLE XSE and TRD Ventilated front seats then are going to be optional, but overall as far as seat comfort goes, eh, they're okay. Toyota has some very comfortable seats on a lot of their vehicles. These I would say are just average, not the very most comfortable, but they're not bad. They're just okay. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped actually for all trim levels across the board. Gotta love that. And then heated is going to be optional on the V6 trims. 10 and 2 grips are kind of on the the smaller side of things wouldn't have minded if they beefed those up a little bit. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Taking a look at the key, you got your Toyota logo on the one side. Flip it over, you got lock, unlock, and that button to pop the rear trunk there. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start for the XLE, XSE, and TRD. So we got the turnkey start on our SE trim that we have today. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot of the brake and turn the key. And so but then once started up, tachometer is to your left, speedometer is on your right, and there's a small digital display front and center. To control what is on that digital display, there are some steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel there. It also will change colors a little bit on the digital portion, depending upon the drive mode that you put it in. But of course it has all the basics like outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's a digital speedometer if you wanted it, the time of day, trip A, trip B, I could go on and on. Pretty much everything you could possibly need on a digital 
digital portion of the gauges at least. Now let's go ahead and take a look at overall interior quality. There's going to be a panoramic glass roof that comes standard on the XLE V6 and the XSE V6 trims if you wanted that. Homelet controls are going to come with the XLE trims and the XSE trim levels. Dual zone climate control is going to be available. You're going to have a wireless phone charger for the XLE trim level and up. Aluminum foot pedals for the TRD trim. Red stitching for the TRD and then ambient interior lighting for the XLE trim level. So just to elaborate a little bit just in front of the shifter since we have the SE trim we have a little bit of rubberized storage and then there's a little bit of a kind of a hidden compartment just underneath that. That's pretty cool that it's hidden. Got a USB charging port 12 volt power outlet to the right of the shifter. You have dual cup holders in your drive modes of course. I don't I'm not a big fan of the matte gray plastic that they finished here. I think they could have put a nice uh maybe texturized plastic design to it. I think that would have looked a lot better around the cup holders there. Then within the center armrest, a ton of storage, more storage than I typically see in sedans. So well done Toyota for that. And you got a couple USB charging ports, USB-A and USB-C in there as well. But I do like the contrast stitching just above the passenger side glove box here. I kind of like the uh, plastic design above that contrast stitching. I think they should have put that design probably around the cup holders here. I think that would have tied together good. I do like the frameless rear view mirror, of course, and it looks like we do have the homelet controls so up the three different garage doors. And uh, if you press this little center thing on the roof here, that is gonna be your sunglass holder. So we got that going for it as well. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen here. Seven inch color touchscreen display coming with the LE, SE, and SE nightshade trims. Nine inch color touchscreen display for all other trim levels across the board. Either way, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, you get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Factory navigation system is going to be optional for the V6 trim levels. You can check out your driving statistics up there along with your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound systems, you will find six speakers that does come standard across the board. Then there is a nine speaker JBL sound system that comes with the XLE V6 and the XSE V6 trim levels. So having said that, we do of course have the six speaker sound system with us here today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And... Let's test out the clarity of this one. All right, bass rumbling everything. So ton of bass with that sound system. No issues there. Clarity, it sounds like six speakers. I'll just put it that way. It's got a clarity of a six speaker sound system, even with Sirius XM, but the bass is pretty darn good. Honestly, it's an okay sound system. If you like music, go with the JBL. But last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the camera in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. So first, let me start with the best part, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. That pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. Driver and front passenger knee airbags, that's very rare rear seat side impact airbags that's a six or seven hundred dollar option with mercedes and bmw come standard on the camry so these are the reasons why it's an ihs tough safety pick plus in the back you're gonna have latch aka lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard toyota safety sense 2.5 plus that's going to give you a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection lane departure alert with steering assist automatic high beams lane tracing assist road sign assist and dynamic radar cruise control then if you were to go with the xsc trim level and up you're also going to get a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and so when it comes to my final thoughts here of the camry incredible reliability that is what they are known for they're known to go well over 200,000 miles so i don't see that being any different with the 2024 seeing as it's still using naturally aspirated engines including the four and the six cylinder actually excellent safety as well you can't beat an IIHS top safety pick plus I love that all-wheel drive is available as well because there's a lot of sedans out there that do not give you all-wheel drive take for example the Hyundai Sonata or the Honda Accord these vehicles don't give you all-wheel drive even available as an option but the Camry does so I'm a big fan of that as far as room for improvement goes I think digital gauges will look dang good in the Camry and the front end looks a little bit polarizing perhaps they're gonna fix that for the 2025 model year and I think multicolor ambient lighting would look good on the Camry, inside the Camry, I should say, 
as well where you can pick your own color but anyways let me know what you guys think of the 2024 camry let me know if you're waiting for 2025 model year or if you're going to go for the 2024 that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold